everyone. Um, welcome to the case study with one of our uh, most special customers, uh, David Um If you go to the next slide, folks. So my name is Sahil. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Rattle. Uh, we are a revenue automation cloud uh, platform. And today we have uh, David, who is the director of RevOps at Go. Uh, and together we want to talk about how Go utilizes Rattle to turn uh, noise into signals. And our marketing team put a, put a pretty good pun there <laughs> about us being the speakers. Um, so if you even go to the next slide. So the concept of noise versus signal is not new. I think we have been talking about this for years and years. Uh, but at Rattle, we put a unique spin to it. Uh, so just to give you an example of what we mean by noise uh, in the revenue world and signal in, in our world. Uh, so if you think from a rep perspective or from a seller or an ape, whichever industry you are in, whatever you call them, uh, there is a lot of information being thrown at them. So from a rep's perspective, there is obviously the trading component uh, that enablement does. There is the operations component that RevOps and sales ops will do. And then they have shit ton of tools that they have to use on a daily basis, which is which are all throwing different uh, information in them. So a rep has to think, hey, these are the six things that I need to do at stage two now. Uh, this is uh, what information uh, this forecasting platform is giving me. This is the information that the neighborhood platform is giving me. And our job at Rattle is to understand the context behind the information and turn that into a signal so that they know exactly what they need to know at that particular point and that they can take action on it. An analogy that I like to use is a physical map versus Google Maps. A physical map, you always have to remember and keep in your mind, but a Google map tells you exactly this is the place where you take a left or right. So that's what we're trying to do with, with, with noise and signal. And uh, I know that you're not here uh, to, to just hear me uh, speak. Uh, you're here for David. So before I hand it off to David uh, to understand how Gong uses Rattle to turn up sales efficiency, I just want to point out that this noise and signal debate is also very costly for organizations. It's costly to the tune that you are losing 30% of your revenue to these uh, this signal that are being lost in noise. 30% uh, of sellers or sellers are spending up to 70% of their time on non-sales related activity. And uh, almost half of revs take almost 10 months to start fully contributing to a company's growth. So if you can dial down uh, the the noise and find the right signals and surface it to the right people, uh, you would be able to create a pretty significant impact on your company. Uh, and what hopefully you'll learn in the next 10 minutes is uh, it's very easy to do. So with that, David, how do you turn uh, noise into signal at home? Yeah, uh, I think one of the things that you said that uh, I always hang on to is there is a shit ton of tool tools. And so what you're looking at here is a fraction of Gog's tech stack. We didn't put it all on here. Um, but there are a ton of tools that we ask our reps to view, engage with, however have you. Um, and so all of these different tools, we're trying to send our reps to, to get value out of the investment we made. And more than likely than not, they're not using them because they find them all to be noise. And so our strategy at Gong is, is to really try to focus our reps into four pieces of technology. Gmail, Zoom, Slack, and Gong. We're, we're pretty big fans of Gong. Um, and so how we think about it is we want our reps, if, if our reps spent 100% of their time on Zoom calls and they had no time to create quotes, no time to update Salesforce, what a wonderful problem we'd like to have. We do not have that problem, unfortunately. We also know they're spending a ton of time in Gmail, coordinating these calls that they're trying to get on responding to uh, emails that they need to have with their customers. But we want Gmail to be how they're communicating with their customers. We want them to be uh, uh, emailing our customers because that seems to be the still, at least today, the, the mode of communication for customers and uh, vendors. And then on the right side is really where we think about how they should be spending their internal time. So Slack being uh, you know, where work happens, I think is their slogan. And uh, we tend to agree. When a rep has a blocker, when a rep needs legal, a procurement, or whoever they need to get a deal unblocked, they tend to be going to Slack. Hey, I need you on this deal immediately. I need to create this quote. And if I don't, here's the ramifications. And they're chasing people down that way internally. Additionally, we're having them use Gong 
to get better, to share with the different people they're pulling into the deals, what's going on with the deal. You know, if I could give a brief commercial on Gong, it would be, I'm coming to this conference today and every rep in our company who knew I was coming sent me the Gong recording of all the people I should go meet. Uh, and so actually anyone that I run into, I, I'll, I had the five minute snippet of what they care about. Um, so we want our, our teams in these four tools. Uh, and really what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce noise. And the way in which we enable that noise to be reduced and turn into signals is through rattle. And the, the, what the rattle platform is really doing for us is it's trying to get rid of some of the, the noise that, that honestly RevOps has created over the years by um, buying a proliferation of tools. Um, in addition, you know, I don't know how many of you, if, if, uh, you've ever been in the case where you create tens and dozens of Salesforce reports and you hope that your reps are going to go view them. And, you know, if you review this report every single day, you know, you can stay on top of your pipeline or you can find the leads that matter. No one does that. Um, and so that was a fool's errand that when I was first starting in sales ops, that we were creating all these reports that we were hoping people would view them, but Rattle gets the right signal to them at the exact right moment to make sure we don't miss any opportunities. I'll talk a little bit more about that today. Um, the other thing that uh, we're using Rattle for to try to cut down on that noise is deal execution. I think the stat you pulled up was takes 42% of reps don't contribute to the, the company if, in 10 months. We have long sales cycles, especially in our enterprise, 12 to 18 months. We've got a three-month uh, onboarding plan. We teach our reps how to um, go through negotiations at Gong, how to engage legal and procurement in those first three months. The likelihood is they don't actually need that knowledge for like another 15 months. And so we're using Rattle to provide that just-in-time training to make sure our deals actually execute the way we want them to be executed. So imagine when a rep gets to a stage or a sales cycle, we spend them the high spot card. I don't think I had a high spot on there, but we use high spot for our, our content management. And that's another place that content just goes to live, but we're sending it at the exact right moment when we know they need it. Um, retention concerns. I, I don't know if uh, this has been plaguing anyone else, but customers are being more scrutin are scrutinizing their investments a lot more than they ever have. And so we want to be ahead of those. Uh, I'll talk today about you know how we're trying to get ahead of those uh, at Gong. And then pipeline stagnation. You know, we I love Gong. I love all the different tools we have. But at the end of the day, what our CRO, what our CEO, and what our board cares about is the pipeline metrics that are in Salesforce or your CRM that you're choosing. The CRM is really how you're going to make a lot of business decisions, how you're going to choose to make your investments. And you're trusting that the data is right. And the reps, they don't want to update the data. They never remember to do it. And they always uh, you know, are complaining about the things that they have to go update. And that's where Rattle comes in for us is how do we reduce the problems with our hygiene? How do we make it so our reps aren't complaining about what they need to do in Salesforce and do it right in Slack, the exact right moment we want them to update it? Um, that's, I think, that was like use case number one why we bought. Um, but uh, we've advanced so much beyond that. But I can talk a little about that. Um, and then, you know, I think this is, uh, in every company I've ever been, the forecast fire drills. I need to go tell my CEO tomorrow what our H2 forecast looks like. And now you're spinning off a bunch of meetings and trying to go chase information down. We're using Rattle to make sure our forecast is updated and our forecast process is adhered to. Um, and so we're trying to reduce those fire drills because there's nothing more that a rep hates than that call at 5 p.m. from their boss to go tell them how their deal is progressing so that their boss can go tell their boss and, and what have you. And so we're trying to cut down on that noise. So that's uh, I know that's a lot of ways we're using Rattle, but I'm excited to talk a little bit more about some of them. I guess I'm on the other side of it, which is I'll ping our CRO and say, hey, hey uh, what's our forecast for next quarter? And I feel like it's just a simple Salesforce report that our CRO will pull and, and say where our forecast is. But from what I've learned, it's never that easy. Uh, there's a shit ton of work that gets done behind the scene based on my message there. Uh, so I, I I now have full simply for that. <laughs> um, so just a very brief idea about Rattle. It's both a signaler and an enabler. So it won't just tell someone when they need to do something. Uh, it will also give them the, the, the way to fix that uh, right from that platform, whether it's Slack or Teams. So our whole thesis is that RevOps will build uh, this 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 whole function within our platform 
But for the A and SDR, we are not a new platform for them to learn. It all happens within Slack or Teams, the platform that they already live in. Uh, just a show of hands, uh, how many people here use Slack? And how many people who use Teams? I feel sorry for you. Um, but yeah, we, we, so for the AE and SDR, it's not a new tool for them to learn, as you will see in some of the examples that we'll show you on the next couple of slides. Uh, it's all keeping them in the flow of their work and that's why it, it actually works. But, uh, they will, you want to talk about some of the ways in which you use Rackle and make it more, more tactical? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love, I got a few examples here. So I told you, I'd, I'd talk a little bit more about missed opportunities. I think this is one of my favorite ones that, that turns Rattle instead of, uh, the tool that ops loves, it turns it into the tool that sales loves. Uh, this is the place that I get the most questions from our reps. Hey, can you build me a rattle to do this, this, and this? So two two tactical examples of how we have used rattle is um, in a seat-based pricing model, um, we allow our customers to go into overages. We don't want to put speed bumps in them, but we do want to know when they've done that so that we can go get a contract signed for those additional seats. And every company I've been at, that's always like a report that you're always chasing people. Go look at this report, see where you have overages, go get the contract signed. The second that overage happens, we're signaling to our sales reps via Slack, hey, this customer just went into an overage for this seat. Can you go talk to this champion? And we can, you know, tee that up for the reps instantly. And that they love those alerts. That's money for them. So not having those is missed opportunities. Um, and then the other one that I, you know, I think I, I speak to a lot in our company is, is handshakes. There's a ton of handoffs between SDR to AE to SE to PS to CS, whatever have you. And those handoffs are really hard to coordinate over email or meetings. And so we're using Rattle to essentially bring people together in channels dynamically without anyone having to do a thing, uh, to make sure that the right people are getting involved in deals. And this is kind of how it, uh, it materializes. It's a very simple. I create a rattle and I say, hey, AE, this customer has activated more seats than they have allowed. And here's all the information. Uh, they can acknowledge, they can view that in the CRM. I can put whatever button with it, whatever information I want them to go find. Uh, and here on the right, you could see another example of, you know, we want um, the, the partner team to be included at the right stage of a sales process. So we alert them uh, in real time when that's happening. Uh, the other thing that we're we're finding a ton of success with is is notifying, you know, sim similar with missed opportunities, but it's like, don't let this go by. Uh, otherwise, you're going to potentially be leaving money on the table, which is retention concerns. When adoptions are falling below a certain level, I don't know about you, but some of our CSMs in our commercial segment have 150 customers. There's no way they're looking at dashboards and prioritizing what's happening when. So we want to be dynamically signaling to them hey, this really big red flag just happened in your account. The champion left. Their adoption fell below a certain um, benchmark. They're, they're not using a certain feature this many days for, before renewal. Whatever those examples are, we want to send them to them in real time. And the key here is, is making sure you're creating signals, not noise. Obviously, if I send an alert for 150 people every morning, that's more noise. But if I can do it at the exact right flag that I want them to take an action, that's where we're we're finding a ton of success. And so you can see what those two look like. Um, and you can see on the, that left example, we're, we're taking them out to content in our high spot um, system to go read about what it is we want them to do when this happens. Uh, David, before we go to the next example, uh, maybe give us a sense for how, what did you try before? Yeah. Um, so when I, I got to, uh, when I got to Gong, I had some prior experience with iPass technology. Um, and I knew how kind of hard it was to, to actually implement that. Uh, and when I got here, when I got to Gong, I, I said pretty publicly, I was like, we need something that's going to signal our reps when the, when the time is right. Um, you know, we had technology for that at previous companies. I was at like LinkedIn and Microsoft. Uh, we really had nothing. Uh, but when I was at LinkedIn and Microsoft, we had engineers building that. Um, and so. And, you know, I consider myself pretty technical, but I found Workado and the trade.io's of the world um, pretty, pretty technical. Uh, we are Workado customers, but we have a Workado engineer and that Workado engineer just left actually. And we are shit out of luck on what to do with, uh, I have, like, we have a ton of technical debt there. Um, so I am not a fan of those solutions because I love my team of 10 analysts and sales ops managers. I know that if I ask them to go create a rattle, edit a rattle, 
and they can do it. And if they don't know how to do it, there's a skills gap. And, and this is a very simple thing that I'm asking them to do. So let's say the example that we see in here, lower option rattle, uh, how much time would it take for someone on a team to build that? Three to five minutes to build, test it for like two minutes. And then if you, once you're confident, I mean, it's five minutes work. Mm. Yeah. As long as you know where the fields are in Salesforce, it's like building a report in Salesforce, but instead of clicking run report, you're clicking email or Slack this person. So it's very, uh, it's very easy. And have you run into any limitations for when you're building this, making it dynamic and, and, uh, zero. I think that's one of the things like, I actually love about the tool is that, you know, Workato and those types of tools, you can do anything. Like I can take a trigger and go build a, a Google sheet, but that's not what I need to do. I need to send alerts in real time. And I'm finding a ton of value from this, uh, and allowing my 10 person team to be in the tool every day so that I don't have to actually think so. Um, just do a quick time check. So th this last one is, um, is about that, uh, that hygiene problem that all that data is driving your business. So this was one of the first use cases we had, uh, we had a wall of shame board that was sent out to the entire sales team every morning. Here's all the deals that your close dates are in the past. Here's all the deals that shouldn't be in this stage. Here's all the deals that don't have a forecast. Um, and no one looked at that wall of shame. Um, we could try to shame reps all we want, but it, they never updated it. Instead, we moved uh, all of that type of workflow to rattle. And so what we're doing is we're saying the day after something moves to close lost yet or uh, close date yesterday, we're pinging them the next morning saying, hey, your close date passed with a really quick button. Do you want to go to the next slide? Really quick button. Do you want to move it seven days, 30 days or move to close lost? Our adherence on this one, I don't I don't have the data, but when I look through uh, in the tool, I mean, 50% of reps are either clicking one of those buttons uh, and the other 50%, uh, not quite 50% are clicking view in Salesforce to determine what to do. But our reps love these buttons because it's like, okay, I don't have to open Salesforce anymore. I just click push seven days, their part's done. Uh, and we're putting that in front of them where they already are, which is Slack instead of uh, places they don't want to be. Um, and then on the left is, you know, deals that have been in, in a stage for longer than we'd ever would have imagined them to be. Uh, we're asking them, Hey, do you want to move it to the next stage, P1, or close lost this to make sure where our hygiene is very good? So we're not just, you know, going to our CRO and say, hey, our pipeline's great. Uh, but really, it's uh, a bunch of stuff that's in that left example where it's, it's all stagnant pipeline that's not real. Um, yeah, I think that's it for me. So, yeah, maybe if you go back to the previous slide, uh, what is important to note here is usually when you buy a tool, either RevOps will love it or uh, sales will love it. Yeah you really have a tool that both parties will love. Uh, but I think the magic of, of, of Rattle, obviously I am biased, that's why we have David right. here, is RevOps build something very quickly because five minutes for them is is very small time compared to the problem that this causes, which is what CEO asks for podcast and you don't have uh, the right data in Salesforce. But A's love it because for them, it's as easy as clicking a single button and getting things done. Uh, which leads to happiness for, for both personas. Um, they will give us a sense for how many rattles do you then have inside our platform? I checked yesterday, like 137. Um, and you know some of them are for the same use case, but I can visualize all of them on a process map of this is for this stage, this is for this type of rattle. Um, so I have no concern of the volume because uh, I know what they're all for. Uh, and it's very easy to kind of place what, what each one is for and, who's kind of the owner on our my team for that sort of thing. And uh, have you ever received any concerns from the AEs and what sort of concerns have they been, whether on the path to deploy more than one party that looks at? Um, I'd say more often than not, I'm getting reps to say, can I get a rattle for this? They, they want the right signal. Um, but you know, you, you know, we always have the reps who are saying, you know, you're always reminding me to go update my close date. And not to that, I'd say like, well, you're always the offender there. So, I'd say more often than not, no, I'm getting more requests for them than I am, you know, noise that, hey, I don't like them. Well, that's that sounds amazing. And I think, uh, so this is all subjective feedback, but when we look at it objectively on how Rattle has implemented or, or improved key metrics that every business cares about, which is win rate, uh, pipeline creation, and sales velocity, I think you can easily see the the dollar impact uh, on bottom end metrics that we all care about. Uh, so using Rattle, uh, Gong has been able to improve their win rates by about 8%. Uh, 
uh, pipeline creation by 10% and uh, reduce deal velocity by 15%. And when you think about a very easy solution that RevOps can get up and running in less than 10 minutes uh, and start driving real value, which is to the tune of uh, millions of dollars at, at long scale, I think that's what you're looking at when you turn uh, noise into signal. Um, I want to take a minute to also introduce our newest uh, feature that, uh, so we we are also customers of Gong and, and we think it's an amazing platform. If you don't use Gong today, I, I would highly recommend you check it out. Uh, but <laughs> but we, we love it. I, 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 I tell the story that the platform that we were on before Gong, it was so horrible that it, it, it made our Gong purchase a no-brainer. But I would say, so what we're doing with this new feature, uh, this is using uh, our integration with Gong and leveraging the power of OpenAI to do a couple of things that have always been a challenge for sellers and ripoffs, which is it automatically takes transcription from Gong, summarizes it, pushes it into the channel, our deal related channel in Slack or Teams, which is where your CRO is, the sales manager is, the AE is, the SDR is, to give them a sense for how the call went. And it will automatically alert the AE for things that they should be updating in Salesforce based on the call. So if this was a sales uh, conversation one-on-one, it will immediately let uh, my CRO know on how this call went based on the transcription from Gong. It will suggest to me that these are the fields, seven fields that you should update in Salesforce. Uh, and uh, it will even give coaching and feedback uh, based on how the, uh, uh, how the call went. So... Uh, we launched it just last week, uh, and if if this makes sense, we're, uh, we'd love to continue the conversation, and uh, we have a booth here, and uh, you can come visit us at the booth or, or take a demo of the platform. Uh, thanks for being a patient audience. Any, any questions? You talked a lot about like so many actions with the website, the ability to take it, how the hell and how it can be able to see things like whole merges within an account or you know, like close date that needs updated. I'm curious if there's a way, whether it's within the help or something that your team does data to be able to track how with reps actually have action on some of those follow items. But like, is there any way you go about saying, like, okay, this rep got these alerts in an app while I'm with X number of prospects, or is that something that's still kind of hard to that? Yeah, actually, when um, when you implement Rattle, it puts a managed package into Salesforce and it dumps a dashboard, I think three dashboards, three dashboards into Salesforce. And so I have like a usage dashboard, I have an action dashboard. So I have all those metrics. Am I going and seeing, hey, this Rattle, what's the what's the follow-up? Only on very certain ones that like I, I need that type of information on, but I have access to it now. Good. Oh, we don't support HubSpot today. We do support Teams. Uh, HubSpot is our roadmap, but uh, we keep finding more and more use cases to solve within Salesforce that we haven't been able to expand outside of the Salesforce ecosystem. How many people here aren't on the Salesforce bandwagon? Okay. most impactful. Uh, what was what was the same type of it? Like, yeah, you forgot to like close the database, not this. Yeah. So I would say too that uh, we actually recommend everyone we use the So one is uh, our deal rooms, which are these dedicated Slack channels uh, or Teams channel for that particular deal, which is for internal collaboration. So I mean, everyone would would uh, relate with the scenario where. Uh, you see some information on your forecasting platform uh, or in Salesforce, and you will want to uh, ping the rep and ask, hey, what, what's happening here? And you go and into Slack or Teams and you create a group DM between a bunch of people. What Rattle does is at the right time, it will create a channel automatically in Slack and manage that channel with all deleted information, all internal collaboration happens there, uh, and even archive the channel at the end of the deal or add more people or remove people throughout the uh, course of the deal. So that's our our one feature that is proven to improve win rates by by at least nine percent. Uh, we are that confident because you can look at pre rattle, uh, post rattle, and see the improvement in win rate for where we created deal rooms. So that's one. Second, for uh, for pipeline velocity, uh, we have seen approvals work really well. 
where uh, it's usually a pain to chase managers to approve quotes and 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 give their feedback. Uh, if you put this into Slack or Teams and you put both the people in the same channel, uh, you will see your approval velocity drop by at least half uh, or increase by by two x. Uh, so I think those are the two which which create an immediate impact within a, a one week uh, where you can see the actual difference. Okay. So like, very surprised that you're releasing a feature to summarize the call out the next steps in the docket. Uh, to wrap up is something. Uh, we, what you, oh, what God. you think that, like, the fear as a sales leader yeah. is that it's not very good. <laughs> so what kind of tactic would you do or how would you compare the Gen AI kind of capability to call or do the next step, the coaching opportunity? Versus what uh, manager will be on their own? Like, how do people? Yeah. So I would say what we are doing is yes, we are using OpenAI and we are summarizing the call. Uh, and once Gong uh, makes their API public for summarization, we'll start pulling the summary from Gong uh, because there's there's no unique source there uh, for the most part. It's all OpenAI. There are a couple of things that we do differently that nobody is in a position to do. So one is we do custom prompts where every company is different. You might want your summary in Medic or Spice because you follow that framework. You might want your summary to take into account the last call. And what Rattle lets you do is, is put a custom prompt and say, hey, I, I, I want the summary to be in this particular context. Uh, so you can change the summary, the next steps, and uh, your coaching and feedback based on exactly the parameter that you want. Second is we plug this right into uh, Slack, into the deal room that I was just talking about, which is where you create instant visibility for the manager within the context of that deal. And then they can listen to the go on call recording, uh, which enhances the usability or the experience for the AE, but also it improves the, the time spent in Gong as a platform. Yeah, the only thing I'd add is I don't think there's any special sauce for what you're doing. Our strategy is that we want to be as secure as possible. So our customers don't want, certain customers are going to want that. Certain customers say, hey, I don't want you to send all of our transcript data to open AI. We have no idea what they're doing with it. So we're developing our own. We are an AI company at heart. So we've got uh, data scientists that have been working on this for a while. And so we're going to create our own transcript and call summary. And so what you get from open AI would be the same thing that we would get, we would do. Um, but ours is going to be proprietary so that we're not passing information to a third party. Um, but if companies are okay with that, then this is a great strategy. But the Dells and the Googles of the world are not. What was that? How do you need the deal room for everybody to see? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The deal room is, is my favorite feature. I mean, the amount of collaboration we're getting in Slack is so much better than email chasing and hounding different executives to do the thing that they said they do. Yeah. So now we have some of our hygiene uh, alerts like, stuck in stage for more than three weeks, go into the deal room, and you will see the CRO jump on that immediately. Uh, bad for the AE, good for the business. <laughs> but uh, any other questions? Cool. Uh, David, any final thoughts? No, nope, thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. And uh, David, I know that your flight last night was canceled and you were at the Dharmac for, for a couple of hours. And uh, he actually just got in uh, 10 minutes ago before this. Uh, so thanks for doing this. And hey, everyone, thanks for thanks for listening. And hopefully this was informative. And again, if this uh, sounds like it might help, uh, find us at the booth and we'll be happy to give you a personalized demo. Thanks. Thank you.